Okay, today we're learning the distributive property. And this is lesson 4.4 in Go Math. Um, and we're ready to start. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about fish. So Mark bought six new fish for his aquarium. He paid $7 for each fish. How many, or how much did he spend in all? So I have my multiplication sentence, find six times seven dollars. Um, and so today we're gonna be learning the distributive property. Um, six times seven was always a challenging problem for me. I don't know why, even when I was uh, um, younger, now of course I know it, but when I was younger, um, I just had a hard time memorizing this problem. Um, so one way that will help you solve it is using the distributive property. So basically, the distributive property states that when multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the products together. So um, that sounds really complicated, but hopefully today I can help you uh, make it easier for you. So as you can see, I added this to our tools for multiplication. So this is one strategy again that you may use and you may feel comfortable using. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make an array with the tiles. And this is gonna show you um, how you could do the, the distributive property, okay? So um, we have our six rows. Remember, rows always go across. Think about the garden or farmer in his field with the plants going across in rows. We have um, six rows, seven per row. Okay, so seven, 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 seven. And so the first thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to split this up in some way. We're gonna distribute the information in two sections because it'll help us if we have an easier problem to solve. So I, I know six times five is pretty easy. So I have six times five. So what we did here is we drew a line down. Okay, you draw your line down the middle or the section of the array and you first solve for six times five. So six times five equals 30. Okay, so let's add that. We'll put a text box in here. And then what you have left is the other part of the array and which is six times two. So we'll show you how that worked then. Because we drew a line here, we have this rectangle two left. Okay, so we have six still times two, which is 12. Then what we would do is we would add those two together. So we would add 30 plus 12 to get the product of 42. Okay, so he spent $42 for his new fish that he got. So by dividing that up, solving an easier problem on each side, and then adding the products together helps you to get the answer. Okay. So we're gonna practice doing that on the next slide. Uh, suppose Mark bought nine fish for $6, okay? So I'm, I'm actually at the pet store in my mind picturing that. As they take each fish out, that's $6 for one, $6 for two, $6 for three, and so on, all the way up to nine. Nine times six is a challenging problem. Um, so we're gonna divide it up, and this way it's going to help distribute the information into two easier problems. So I think what I'm going to do is, I know five times six is pretty easy for me. So I'm going to say, okay, let's, we'll do one, two, three, four, five going across. And when I can, if I'd be able to divide this equally and split it right down the middle, that would really benefit me because I could just double it then. Whatever the product is, I'd be able to double it. But in this case, I couldn't equally divide it going across. I bet you, though, I could equally divide it going down now that I see it because I have three on this side and three on this side. Maybe we'll give that a try when we're finished with this problem. So I easily can solve five times six, which is 30. So here, that's what they have us doing. We split it up. So I want you to kind of think about um, this having that line down like I had mentioned before. And so this is the problem, and then this is how we're going to solve it. And really, this side is going to equal this side in the end. So I have my six times five. Now I need to add that product, which is 30. We'll put that here, because we already know that. But I have to solve this problem too. I'm not finished yet. So I have four rows with six in each row. 
And I know that four times six is, go ahead and see if you can figure that out, 24. And then I have to add these together. I have to add this section plus this section. So 30 plus 24 equals 54. So I figured out this problem by figuring out the area of um, rectangle one, the area of rectangle two, and then adding them together for 54. So Mark spent $54 for nine fish. Okay, so let's practice one more problem using the distributive property. So let's say you have a problem that is six times eight. Now I wanted to show you this on paper without the array. I will have the array here to show you kind of visualizing it, but I wanted to show you how you would solve this first without the array. Because most likely in your real life, if you were to have a multiplication sentence that you're trying to figure out, um, you wouldn't have an array right beside of you. So what I can do for this is I'm gonna think, what is half of eight? I can split eight into two groups. I can split it into four and four. So then I will take my six, I will multiply six by one of the fours to get 24. Now, of course, because eight is four plus four, right? I can just do that again. But really what I would do is just double the 24. So I'm taking that problem, splitting it in half, and then I would add 24 plus 24 in the end to get my final product. So that's what that would look like on paper. You can divide this in any way you want. So if you wanted to, you could split apart the six into three and three. Let's give that a try and see if we're able to do that. So now we're taking six, we're gonna break it into three and three, so let's first do three times eight. Let's see if we get the same product equals 24, and then of course we have to take that other three times eight, and we would still get 24, right? And then we add, and look at that, same product. So it doesn't matter which number you decide to split apart as long as you then double it, okay? And make sure that you're taking that number in half and then you would double it. Now to show this on my array, First, I would take my line and I would draw it right here for this first one because I have six rows of four. So just how we would have six groups of four, six rows with four in each. And then, I don't know why my line didn't show up there. Let's see if I can send that to the front. Oh, still won't work. Okay, that's okay. You see that line there. Visualize that going down like that. So we have our six times four, six times four, and then we add those two together. So the distributive property is a strategy that you would use when you're solving a multiplication sentence that has larger numbers or greater numbers um, than your easier ones. And so we added that to our tools for multiplication. Um, it's definitely something to become familiar with. You will hear those words often throughout your schooling distributive property when you are doing math. So it's just good to understand how it works. I will see you next time for lesson 4.5.